My name is Rob Leoy. Some of you might have met with me Tuesday. I'm one of the MonoWorks CSAs here at Microsoft. I specialize in SharePoint, OneDrive, Stream, and kind of anything else they throw at me. A um, couple of questions for your team, because we're going to try to make this a little bit interactive. Um, are you using SharePoint currently? Do you have an internet that you're using? Uh, some people over here use SharePoint quite a bit. Uh, I think it varies based off of where they are on campus. Okay. Okay. And um, do we have SharePoint admins on the call, or is this end users? Yeah, if anyone wants to put in the chat um, what their experience yeah. is with SharePoint, that would be awesome. Yeah, that would be great. That would be great. We're going to be talking about this from um, – I'm not going to get into the administration angle – too heavily um because that could be a whole co another conversation but i do want to show you know depending on how your environment's set up how sites can be set up if you're an end user and you're letting you know your end users create sharepoint sites and then as an admin if you have something implemented like a ticketing system where somebody has to request a site how that's going to look as well um okay so so I see that there are some, yep. All right, so I see some questions in the chat. While I'm going through everything, um, I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. If you just want to unmute, yell at me, throw something. Um, I'm from up north, I'm kind of used to that sort of thing. So feel free. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna just go ahead and start diving into it. Um, Kind of starting off here, this is, as we've talked about Tuesday, some of the information is going to overlap from what I discussed Tuesday, but we're going to really dig more into the just actually doing stuff. Um, this is the page you get when you click on the waffle and you go to SharePoint. You get this SharePoint landing page. And you see there's going to be a couple of sections here that are going to show you different things. Um, so I've got some save for later stuff. I've got some recent items that I've gone and looked at, and I've got some of the stuff I'm following. Um, one thing you're able to do now is you are also able to view news from the various sites. We're going to cover posting news because it's a great way to communicate things. And eventually, if you start getting into things like Viva and things like that, it'll work within Viva as well. We're going to stick to mostly just how it works within SharePoint. Um, I'm also able to create pages from here. We're going to come back to that in a few because I do want to show you the ability to create pages. It's kind of cool. Um, but for the most part, we're going to start with the SharePoint sites. Um, just to reiterate for anybody that wasn't on Tuesday's call, there's two main types of SharePoint site. You have this style of site. This is the top level of my tenant. This is the main site. If somebody just goes to, you know, the the top of the tenant, this is what they're going to get. This is my Midvale school system. This is what's called a communication site. So communication sites are for broadcasting information out. You have, you know, the idea behind it is a majority of your end users are going to have some sort of read access to this with a smaller group having a contribute access with some owners. And we're going to talk about those permissions in a little bit. Um, the idea with this is you have a lot of, you know, I have my time zones here. I have different events coming up. I've got some news. As you see here, I've got some more news. And some more news and more news and more news because I use this for demoing quite a bit. Um, the pages are set up in a specific way. So what we have is you have your global navigation up here. This is because this is part of a hub, which is sites that you relate together to create some sort of relationship where you can roll content up throughout the hub. This is that navigation that's going to show on all of your hub sites. This is the navigation for the site itself. And whether it's on a communication site or a team site, you get, nav you get some sort of navigation. This is a team site. This is for my physical science team. 
Um, you can tell it's a team because it's a private it list private group here, whereas here it doesn't list anything. Um, the navigation is on the right hand side here. Usually by default, it's at the top here. However, um, you can change that and we'll get into that in a few. Um, essentially, when you're creating a site, there's one of two ways you can do it. Um, you can either allow your end users to just create their own sites as they go, um, which is fine if that's what you're looking to do. I've worked for some companies where they just wanted to have it be a open collaborative platform. So they allowed users to create their own sites, do what they needed to do. They had security measures put in place like sensitivity labels, things like that. Um, but just let their users sort of have um, a la carte to just do whatever they want. Some organizations want to have more of a structured, regimented intranet as far as SharePoint goes. So they don't necessarily let their users create their own sites. Um, we're going to talk more about that in a minute. If you're an end user and you want to create a site, essentially you can either go from here on this main page and you'll see this create site. And you'll get this window where you either get a team site, which is going to give you the team site that is connected to a 365 group, which means that you can also create a Teams panel with it. Um, or you get a communication site. So either one of these you can create if you're allowing end users to create their own sites. Um, if you're going from the SharePoint page, you can create a site from here and you get the same window. So, you know, if I'm going to go from here and let's say I want to create a team site, I go to click it and I get all of these templates that I can choose from. So let's say, you know, in this case, I am rolling out a new training course. I can use the training course template. It's got a home page included. And it's going to tell me what capabilities are available. So you can display the course description, share course resources, highlight course news, promote upcoming events, and showcase some instructor details. Um, and you can use that template. We're not going to do that just yet because I also want to show you. Yeah, and we're going to get out of that. If you do a communication site, you also get a bunch of stock templates. So... You know, in this case, we have, you know, the standard communication, brand central, crisis management, so on and so forth. Now, let's say um, I wanted to, where did I put it? We had a new event rolling out that's going to be happening. Some big event, fill in the blank, whatever it is. I can click on this and I can see, again, I get the same capabilities. I get what's included. And I want to use the template. I just use it. And we're going to call this the new event. Now, I can just put a site name in here if I want, or I can um, put a description. Really simple. I click Next. It'll ask me what language and I can create the site. Now it's going to apply the template. It's going to go through. Um, and I see you're considering moving 200 plus file documentation away from Confluence into SharePoint. Yeah, that can be done. Um, I would definitely say, you know, there might be some analysis that will need to get done, um, especially where, you know, you'll have to figure out what may need to land where. Um, there are some limitations with SharePoint. Um, and I can, I meant to take that up. I'll, I'll get that over to everybody. But as you see here on the event page, it's already got a Viva Engage section along here. It has these web parts in here and it's got some navigation. Now, what I can do is also as an admin, Let's say you have some sort of request system set up, like you have a ticketing system, be it ServiceNow, fill in the blank, what have you, where somebody has to request a site as a SharePoint admin, not as an end user, because this is the admin portal. Um, I can create a site and I get some more options. 
So I can create a team site or communication site, much like you saw in the other window. I also want to point out, if you've got questions, there are links for literally most things um, within any of the windows you click on. You also get the ability to browse more sites if you want. So let's say you want to create a team site, but you don't want a 365 group. You can do that. And then you get some of these other ones here. I will tell you now, nine times out of 10, you're not going to want to worry about these because these are what are referred to as classic sites as opposed to the more modern sites. Um, getting back to our event page. Now, let's say I'm looking at this like, all right, that's fine. Now we need to sort of customize this to how we may you know want to get it set up there's a couple of different places i'm going to look at um so first off if i want to change the look and feel there's this gear up on the top right and you're going to get a whole bunch of menu options um i can apply a site template if i want i'm already using the event template but i'm going to just show you that even if you apply the event template, you can use a different one if you so choose. Um, and it's pretty much the same that we saw when we we're setting up the site. You would just use the template and off you go. Um, in this case, let's just try it just for giggles um, and make this a department site. Now, what happens when you use a template is, let's say you have an existing site, you want to apply a template. That doesn't mean that all the content that was on the site originally goes away. It'll keep everything. It just means that it's going to apply the template on top of everything you already have. In this case, now, this is a department site. Now let's say, all right, so now I got, you see, I've, it's got, it just added on to the navigation. So the event, schedule, and speakers, FAQ, and then, um, You know, you have these additional ones here. Sorry, I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm just took a look at the chat. Um, but I can also just go back and make this an event page again. While we're doing that. Process support grid to help with how we allocate JIRA tickets. Yeah, uh, okay. Is that, um, and you can just put it in the chat. Is that something that is like, um, like a list that you have in there. Now, if you wanted to clean up the navigation, what I can do is I can go to edit here and then start removing some of these links that it added. Because I just went back to being an event page. But as you see here, if I go to my settings, if I go to site contents, you're going to see there's a whole, there's a couple of libraries in here and some calendars, and you have site pages. So site pages are where all of the pages for your SharePoint site are going to live. Um, currently right now, this is my home, but as you see, it's pretty much added everything that I did flipping the two templates back and forth. Um, yeah, that's an excellent use case of a uh, SharePoint list. And we're going to talk about lists a little bit more later on. So you see, I updated the navigation here. Now, if I want to edit the page itself, I click on edit. And you see, I get these different, this menu over here for different web parts. So let's say I wanted to add edit this for leadership con conference. So I can do the date and time. I can display the timer in different fashion. Let's say I really want to make people frantic. I can add the seconds in here. Um, call to action. And I can also change the background image. So background images are kind of cool. Uh, before, you'd have to go search the internet, download something, upload it to SharePoint, and then add it. In this case, I can do a web search right from here. And the cool thing is, um, let's say I want to look up happy crowd. The good thing is, is, and this is something that I get asked 
a lot. It'll actually give you the license you can use. So Creative Commons, meaning something that you can just use freely and you don't have to worry about licensing. You don't have to worry about somebody going, hey, you can't use that. It's free to use. Um, it has the Creative Commons licenses. Uh, you can also choose to go all. In this case, I'm just going to go with this. And these people look happy. So I want to add a happy crowd image and go from there. Um, yeah, and you can do that. And this is to answer Cole's question about SharePoint pages within the site for easy version tracking and browser viewing, rather opening a whole Word document. You can do that. Um, just depends on what you're looking to do. Uh, I will say if you read enough documentation, you'll see we used to have something called wikis. We don't anymore. Um, those were a classic feature. Uh, for the modern feature, you can just do new pages. I'm going to show you doing that now. I'm going to show you how to do that now. Um, you can literally just go new page and it will just start giving you different templates you can use. And you can see here, you'll get different things you can look at. Let's say it's a training page. This will give you a sample of what the page can look like. And as you can see here, you have a web part to add a video from stream. Um, as we talked about Tuesday, stream, um, is what SharePoint uses to watch videos um, within SharePoint Online. And to answer your question, can you make a custom documentation template? Um, you can. You can. And I can see about digging up some documentation on how to do that. So I can get that. I'll get that over to you after the call when I send over the other links, if that's all right. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head how labor intensive it is. There might have to be some things that get set up from the admin side of things, um, but I'll at least get the documentation over to you. What we also have, now I'm going to go over here to show you this, is the ability to do news. So news is a web part that we have that you can push news out to your end users. We're going to click this again because sometimes it's so nice you have to click it twice. And if I go to my news web part and I go to edit properties, it'll give me this because this tenant just does not like me. <laughs> it's cold up here in Boston and even SharePoint knows it. All right, let's try this again. All right. Let's give this a minute. Um, we're going to submit this for approval. You can also do approvals on stuff. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, if I wanted to add a new news page. So before with SharePoint, you'd have to do news and like lists and do all these different workflows and stuff. What you can do now is if I just go add a news post, this also creates a page. And you can see the ones that have been saved on the site the ones that are blank. So if I want to do a blank news post here, I go, it starts creating a page and I'm going to give this a title. I can add some text in here. I can also add different web parts. So if you click on this and these pluses, you can either add a section or a web part. So let's say I wanted to you know, embed a YouTube video or embed a stream video. I can select a video if I do stream and this will give me the different stream videos that I have access to. I know my EDU video has different videos. Um, we're gonna throw Elephant's Dream on here. It's an open source movie that I just put in here for demonstration purposes. I can do that. And then this is pretty much how the page will look. I can also change the banner. So if I wanted to update the image of the banner and do this, you know what, we'll add pizza to this. I could do that. Now there's approvals on this, so I'm gonna submit for approval. And then submit. Now, what I can also do, whereas previously, 
what I've seen a lot of customers want to get out of is having to email, like set up a page, copy the link, email it out. Right from here, you can do an email preview. And what this will mean is this will show you what the email could look like. I'm going to try this on a different page just that doesn't have approval. So you can kind of see how it would work. If I do a news post and do a newsletter, I'm going to create the post. And we're just going to go with how it looks stock. As you see, it's got some information on here. This is all fine. If I don't have approval set, I can click post and send. Now, what this does is allow me to, oh, I got to add a title. And to answer your question, too, about, oh, come on, about the pages and Word documents, Word documents and pages will both have um, version history on them, just in case that's one of the main considerations that you're looking into. Um, if I click post and send here, it's posted, but now it gives me this pop out window where it will show me, okay. This is what the email could look like. I can add names in here. I do test. I could do an additional message. I can have a lot of the content in here. I can also just send a link. And then if I add a name in here, send this to Kara Coleman, I can click send. I can also skip it if I want. In this case, I'm just going to skip it. Uh, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to send this to myself. We can see what the email looks like. And we're going to send it out. So you can send it out like that. We click OK. Getting back to here, some of the things that you should consider when you're building out your SharePoint sites is what I like to call like the um, two clicks. So essentially, any content within your site. End users don't want to have to go futzing about fumbling through your site, looking for stuff. One of the big things, and this is something you're going to want to consider, especially if you're moving off of um, other sites, is how is, is, you know, folder structure. So if you have on your other, wherever the files are, they're five, six, 20 folders deep, that's going to be a nightmare for end users to get. Two, you can break them out into multiple document libraries, which is going to be easier and allow you to do navigation to the document libraries. So for instance, here, if I go back to physical science, I go to my site contents. Because this is a team site, you can see I have multiple document libraries here. I have class files, class materials, documents, student work. I can add additional ones if I'm a site owner. Um, let's say I wanted to add one and again, you want templates, we got more templates. Um, I can do a blank library. I'm going to do an archive. I have sensitivity labels, so I can do a sensitivity label and it will automatically add it to the site navigation. So now I have an archive library. I can create those multiple libraries, create navigation to it, making it easier for my end users. I see it a lot when folks are moving stuff off like file shares, especially with file shares where you end up with folders 20 deep and at the end is a PST that's labeled as Scott's Pizza Party. And you don't need all of those. Um, well, do we need to put it on? Okay, that's not a question for me. Um, so, you know, it's something to consider. These are things to consider when you're setting up your sites is how do you want your end users to navigate to things? How do you want your end users to get the content? You can also just go ahead and display your content right on the main page. In this case, because this is the physical science team site, we have our documents right here. If I click the, the uh, shish kebab menu, because we like to give food names to everything. This is shish kebab menu. I can go through and filter it out in such a way so it shows only specific content. I can do compact, I can do a carousel. In this case, we're gonna stick with the list. I can show up to a lot of items. 
and then I can hide it if there's nothing to show and I can republish it. And as you're going to see, it's going to show all these items. Now, the cool thing is, is if we go to Teams, because we have this SharePoint site within Teams, as we've talked about before, I can go to my physical science team. And there's a SharePoint site. So they don't necessarily even have to go into SharePoint. They can be working within Teams. Your end users can go in here, get all the files you want. Here's the home page with all this information. Here's the class documents. Here's a link, um, a tab in the files to documents as well. So this is an example of how it all rolls in to each other. Um, on the topic of Word documents versus SharePoint pages for documentation, which works best with Microsoft 365 Copilot? They're both on the, but um, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Copilot's going to be able to, to capture either one. It's all data to Copilot. The big thing is going to be whether or not the user that is looking for information has access to it. Because bear in mind, Copilot is going to be going off of whatever permissions your end users already have. So if you have a bunch of Word documents with payroll information out there, if the end user doesn't have access to it, it won't show in Copilot. If for some reason somebody goofed and did something where, and I'll show you this example, I can't remember if I have this. So let's say if they, you know, this is a document library and I'm going to go to the site. Um, oh, where is it? Library settings. I'm going to go permissions for this library. If they have, if you have something where you have this, everyone except external users, that means every single account in your environment that is going through Entra, the artist formerly known as Active Directory. Um, they'll have some sort of read-only access to it, which means Copilot is going to be able to pick it up. So it's all based off those permissionings, as it were. Which leads me into permissions. So <laughs> that little segue. Um, when you are working with SharePoint sites, um, you're going to get three default groups. So any a site that I create, I'm going to use this event site because this is brand new. I'm going to look at my site permissions. You're going to see that I have three groups out of the box. I have site owners, site members, and site visitors. Currently, this is how it's set up. I also like to look at here. This is how users can share. So you can control how they share for any site. If you're a site owner, this is stuff that you can set yourself. There's tenant level permissions, and then there's site level permissions. Site level can never be more permissive than tenant levels. Um, I won't go too far into that because if I do, we will be here all day um, listening to me give a TED talk on all of this stuff, which is great for me, but I'm sure you guys got other calls you need to be on. So in this case, let's say I wanted to say only site owners can share files, folders, and the site. Um, I'm going to allow access requests. I'm going to hit save. I can do that. I'm old school. I've been doing SharePoint since it's 2003 iteration. So I'm going to go into advanced permission settings and look at what those are. And for these three groups, I have members, owners, and visitors. Visitors is going to be anybody within the company. This is where I'm going to go in. And I can either use security groups. I can use 365 groups. Or... I can go everyone except external users. I will say when you're doing permissions like this, I always show the options and uncheck the email invitation unless I deliberately want to. I got bitten by that when I worked at Bose. They were working on a new project, had me set up a site that not everybody knew about. They were going to be announcing it Monday. I did the permissions and forgot to uncheck the box. And then 60 people were then emailing my boss wondering what this new project was that they were unveiling. So bear that in mind. 
in this case, now that I'm sharing this with the whole organization, except external users, so that means the guest users won't have access to this. If you have external users coming in your environment, that's what you can do. Um, those are going to have read, event members are going to have edit, owners are going to have full control. And anytime you want to add people from into one of these groups, you just click new, add users, and then enter their names in here. Pretty straightforward with that. Um, and sort of pivoting off of that, one thing I did want to talk about as we're going through all, nope, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on. Is talk about search and hub, um, hubs. So essentially you also have the search functionality here in addition to your navigation. Search is really good. Search also runs off of your SharePoint, OneDrive, Teams access. If you think about it, Copilot is using the same pretty much access that your search will, that your SharePoint will, that OneDrive will, so on and so forth. I can search in SharePoint. I can search specific sites. I can search if I type in test and hit enter. This will give me a whole bunch of results. And I can look at different files. I can look at sites. I can look at people, news, images, videos. So this is another element that you can look into. Um, along with that, because we have what are called hubs, hubs can be used to roll content up to what is referred to as the parent site. Now I'm gonna go over to the admin portal. And I know I'm throwing a lot of information at everybody. I'm trying to get as much as I can in within the hour. Um, hub sites is essentially what you can what you can look at is grouped together sites. So this is the admin portal. A lot of end users aren't going to see this. For the SharePoint admins, if they're already on the call, um, there are any on the call. Hub sites can be looked at within your active sites, and you have all these different hubs that I've created. So right now, um, I can look at my Midvale school system hub, where this site, which is my top level site, is the main hub. And then I have all of these sites related to it. Now, one of the things that will happen is I can have navigation up at the top that'll lead me to different sites within the hub. Also, whatever branding that I choose for this top level site, we'll get to that in a minute, will be picked up by all of the relevant sites. So I've got this Midvale school system here with its branding. If I go to my fourth grade site, the fourth grade site also picks up the same branding. So I can have that branding propagate throughout that hub. The other thing that happens is any news that I put on these sites. So if I add a news page here and I'm going to create a post and we're just going to call this test fourth grade, I'm going to post it. And yeah, it's just gonna keep giving me issues today. I apologize. And we're gonna skip that. Now I have this test fourth grade. If I go back to my main page, you see I've got these news posts here. And what I can do is I can edit this. Yep, I, that's what I wanna do. Oh, SharePoint, I love you. <laughs> All right, we're going to try this. We're going to delete that, and we're going to add a new news web part. Okay, so this is pulling in. Now that I've reset this, I can choose the news source. So this site, all sites in the hub, I can select specific sites. This will give me any sites within the hub as well. In this case, I want to do all sites in the hub and just I'm going to leave everything stock. 
I'm going to submit it. But you see, there's that fourth grade news post that I just added, and it rolled up to the top level site. I can also do that with content. So if I have specific content I want to roll up, if I go to my highlighted content, this will highlight whatever specific content I choose. So if I go to the shish kebab menu here, I can filter it out. I can do a custom query if I want. I'm not very good with KQL, so I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do different sources. I can pull from any one of these sort of different things. In this case, I'm just going to go with documents. And let's say I wanted to pull in any Word documents that are being shown throughout the hub. I can do that. I can filter off certain words. And then I can submit. And now you'll see I have this web part here that's going to roll that content up. So this is really good to sort of keep in mind, especially if you're looking to sort of build out more of an intra net or you're building out like-minded sites you have you know an english department you have a mathematics department you have an it department you can do that um you know i have my information technology site here where this is where i can put different things um set up different elements you see i got my sharepoint links here for different scripts that users might want to get to getting a github different things like that so you're able to do those different things with it um any questions so far because i've been yapping your ears off so far All right, so we're going to just keep going. And we're going to talk about, get a little bit more into list document libraries and sharing. So there's different ways you can set up lists and document libraries. You can go to your gear here. You can go to site contents. And you're going to see this new button here, and it'll give you that option. You're also going to see the option for subsites. I'm going to highly recommend if you don't have to, don't set up subsites. It's a thing in the past. It's something left over from the SharePoint on prem, uh, which was the environments where you had a SharePoint server set up somewhere in your environment. Um, everything now goes with more of what we call a flat architecture so everything sits side by side it makes it easier to change navigation it makes it easier to change things around i'll give you an example i a uh, company i worked for previously was the largest for-profit healthcare organization in the country and they had multiple states with multiple hospitals and they set up everything under their main site as nothing but sub-sites underneath it by state and then by hospital and then when they wanted to reorganize and have everything broken out differently in their words, not mine. I'm not making this up uh, by NCAA brackets. We couldn't do it because then that means we're having to migrate everything around. Whereas if you have everything set up with hubs in a flat architecture, I can take any one of these sites as an admin. I can just change the hub association to whatever I choose. And that's it. Yours won't look like this. Mine's a little wonky because that's just the way it goes here but i don't recommend doing subsites now that i've given you that ted talk if you're looking to do new document libraries it's pretty much as easy as just going here click document library click list list you got specific templates you can pull from um so you can also copy an existing list from another site if you have one that you already have out there and you want to reuse it you can do an existing list so let's say I wanted to pull from any one of these sites. I don't know if I have a list I can use. Oh, hold on. There we go. I want to pull the tickets list. And it's just going to use it as a template. And now this ticket list is out here. This is pulled from the help desk. Um, 
And that's a little different. That's a little different. Teams is going to be a little bit different because when you're creating private channels in Teams, it doesn't. That's not creating a subsite. What that is doing, and you can sort of see that here. Um, if I go to my site contents, I'll get back to what I was doing in a minute. Um, if I go to, I think it's documents. All those private channels that you build under a team are just going to show as folders under your document library. So it's a completely different thing where you're not necessarily creating a subsite. You're creating a private channel under, say, the physical science team. And then it's going to put all those files. They're still going to reside in that main SharePoint site. So it's 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 a little bit different. It looks similar because you're you know going into teams and you're having all of these different channels and then hidden channel like all these different channels here it's all residing in the same sharepoint site um getting back to where was i oh, no come here right here okay so this is the list i created you know if i click on here it'll show me the form that gets filled out and away we go um the same thing with document libraries so if I want to go back to my main site and create a document library, I just create a document library, not as many templates. Um, but again, I can pull from an existing library if I so choose. If I have one where I've created a whole bunch of different, um, uh, you know, fields in there and different things like that, I can pull from that. Um, in this case, we're not going to do that. We're just going to create a new document library. And let's say I wanted to create a media library. So again, this will give me all this. It's it's going to look like this. I don't have any videos in here, but it'll show you there's flows, workflows. Um, some of you may have been on with uh, my coworker, Nick Miller, awesome guy, yesterday talking about Power Automate and Power Platform. So it has pre-canned flows that are built into it um, and different views and different things like that. I can use this template to just spin it up and then I can select a specific uh, sensitivity label because I have that set and create it. And this will just automatically create it. And then what I can do is I can set up some features. This is going to get into the flow. I click next. It's going to start setting this up. I don't have to do anything on the back end. Right, looking good. Yes, yeah, that's exactly what you would do. Um, you would go, you would have an HR hub, HR site. So in this case, you know, I have this human resources site, and then I could have different departments connected to it: payroll, benefits, employer relations, anything like that, and then that would roll up to the main HR site. So there'd be a parent child relationship as opposed to a site a subsite. And then for different things such as let's say you had a human resources site and an admin site. And then for whatever reason they decided payroll should be under administration, not under HR. It's as simple as you could go in and just your one of your admins could go in and let's pretend this brand guide is that example. You can go in and just change the relation and then you've just changed the relation to the different for the different hubs. It looks pretty simple. It is pretty simple, but it's something that you'd have to give some thought and put some thought into as you were doing it. But it's a lot better than if you had a human resources site and then a payroll site underneath it. And then all of a sudden somebody high up on the food chain says, well, we want payroll to be under administration, but it's under human resources. Now you got to create a new administration site. You're going to move all the content over. You're going to migrate everything. You got to set up new permissions. This makes it a lot easier if you need to reorganize things as it were. Um, and some of the documentation I'll send over will be about hubs as well. Um, as far as the document libraries and sharing, so if I go to any of these documents here, there's different ways I can share. So I can go into 
Uh, what's a good one? I'll go to my Midvale school system. Actually, let me click here and see if I have any uh, <clears throat> documents. Yeah, so I get this test document. Now, if I want to share it, I simply click the meatball menu here. I can either open in the browser, open in the app. I can preview it. I can share it. And when I go to share it, I can just add a name in here. Kara Coleman. I can put what permission level Kara should have. I can also view who currently has access to it. And it's these three groups here. And again, this just brings me back here. Um, I can go to send a link in Outlook. It kind of does the same thing. And I can just send it. And that's it. And it'll share it out. You can do that with list items. You can do that with list. You can do that with document libraries. And let me just go back to my notes here. All right. And that pretty much covers what I have. I'm going to open up the floor to any additional questions you may have. Anything you might have wanted to see that I didn't cover? Yeah, Rob, there's a yeah. few questions in the chat. Mike had one. Yeah. Cole had one there, too. Yeah, so I saw Cole's question about the private channels. Um, uh, the, the SharePoint team's relationship. SharePoint is the back end for teams. So essentially, when you set up a team, if I go into Teams and I create a new team, it's automatically going to set up a SharePoint site for the back end for all your files, folders, um, document libraries, lists, what have you. You can't have you can't have a team without having a SharePoint site. Yeah, it's SharePoint all the way down. Even your OneDrive. So this is my OneDrive. This is a SharePoint site and it's back end. It's just set up a little bit differently because I have permissions on this that I can set. It's a site collection. Any of these top level sites are referred to as a site collection. It's one of our old. And yes, Chris, you can set up a SharePoint site without a team. So that's what we were talking about, what I was sort of talking about before, where you have this type of site which is a communication site. You have this type of site, which is a team site. A team site is nothing more than a SharePoint site that is connected to a 365 group. And here's where it gets super awesome and super confusing. You can also have a team site without a 365 group. So I can create as an admin, end users can't do this. I can create a team site without a 365 group And create the site, add my user, click next. Yep, we're fine. And this will create a team style site that doesn't have um, a SharePoint site. And is it possible to embed a loop component into a page on my team SharePoint? Well, that's one I haven't tried. Um, it might be one second. That's a good one. I'm going to actually. I'm going to put this in the chat. A good article. Yes, it can be. You might have to do some wiggling around with it, but you are able to. <laughs> That's what I like. Questions that I haven't seen before. Because I know a lot of folks are interested in loop. Um, so it's good to know about that. And Rob, we did have that loop session earlier this week. So if folks uh, missed out on that session, it'll be on the YouTube site. I think that might be a good way to 
close the loop. Oh, wow. I see nice, what you did there. Bill. I see what you did there. Thank you. He is absolutely correct. It's going to be on our OIT YouTube channel uh, sometime next week. And then as those get uploaded to YouTube, they're going to be uh, linked on that uh, Microsoft Week homepage that we created. Very nice. You can also, depending on what your use case is, to loop back to it. You could also house them in your SharePoint site if you wanted to. Nice, but nice. that also means that also means that you know if people are trying to view it externally, they can't. Um, but just to touch on that, you can set up any. Basically, you can house videos in any document library, and they'll just display in SharePoint. Yeah, and that's that's correct. That's correct. It's still the permissions are still going to apply. So even if they have access to the SharePoint site, they may not have access to the loop component. All right. Any other questions? I'm looking through the chat here as well. I think I tried to answer these as much as I could before we, as I was going. Yeah, and just to piggyback off of what Stephanie said, uh, a lot of times end users are going to be using Teams more often um, with some communication sites thrown in. Um, if you were on the call Tuesday, one of the things I talked about is like OneDrive are your files, Teams are your department's files, and Communication sites are everyone's files. So for like heavy duty collaboration, Teams is going to be the way to go, especially where you want to, you know, kind of have people not only working on documents together, but talking about documents, not having to send emails back and forth, so on and so forth. Whereas communication sites are going to be those high level, like here's, and I've seen some, some customers have, you know, they'll have like a HR communication site, but then an HR team as well so think of it as like the external facing to the organization and then the internal that they work on everything together it all comes it's all going to boil back to what the business use cases are <laughs> 